care about any of our rights and the Constitution. But first, for the second consecutive day, wildfires are sweeping through California, especially beachfront cities like Malibu and San Diego. And I want to get one thing straight right from the start. Loss of life, property, tragic. The people who are fighting these fires, heroes. But I got to tell you, this story just pisses me off. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest. Wildfire may be a natural disaster, but you got to stop kidding yourself, America, and pretending that man isn't partly to blame for making things worse. I remember spending my summers at my grandfather's house at his farm. I can still see him screaming at that old Zenith TV that we had in the living room, yelling about how the mismanagement of our forests is going to get people killed one day. You ask any farmer, anybody who's lived closely with the land, and they'll tell you, you can't change much. Mother Nature. We're the ones screwing things up. Why does this global warming phenomenon only seem to happen in our part of the globe? Why have we why have we tried for decades to stop the natural cycle of burn and regrowth? And most importantly, why do we think that we can continue to believe that man knows best when every bit of evidence tells us it ain't true? Mother Nature is tough enough. We don't need to make matters worth, w worse with our bad environmental policies. Chris Horner is the author of Politically Incorrect Guide to Global Warming and Environmentalism. And R.J. Smith is an adjunct uh, environmental analyst with the Competitive Enterprise Institute. Let me, st let me start with you, R.J. How much money do you get from big oil? <laughs> I don't think big oil has anything to do with uh, with the forest fires. Okay, and, and, and I'm not sure. I mean, I just, uh, I uh, the I environmentalists got... get big oil of money themselves too. Look, here's the thing: we're going to talk about things that are politically incorrect. Nobody else on television is going to say this, and I know all the bloggers are right now going, "Oh, big oil, big oil, big oil." They're going to deny global warming. I'm not denying global warming, but Chris, let me ask you this: I keep hearing that this is global warming that's doing this. And I keep thinking to myself, how many years have we let the underbrush grow and nobody will do anything? If these super fires are caused by global warming, wouldn't these super fires be happening all around the globe? Are they or are they not? Well, fire happens everywhere, and it is a natural disaster if man's there. Otherwise, it's a disaster purely for nature, but again, it is natural. Global warming is not a likely suspect for the following reason. The warming that the alarmists are talking about is one degree Fahrenheit over the past 150 years, most of which occurred before World War II, none of which occurred in the past decade. Okay, we can probably reliably take global warming off the suspect list. Second, it's not clear that a warmer world would be a drier world. You know, as you know, Glenn, they rely on computer models to scare us. The computer models disagree with each other. The two the United States used for a Al Gore produced report as they left office said the Red River Valley was going to be a floodplain or a desert. So, you know, prepare for it. Okay, so RJ, let me, let me help me out. Because if I hear the if I hear global warming one more time, blood's going to shoot out of my eyes. No, it has little if anything to do with global warming, uh, Glenn. Or, or what happens? I mean, you're right from what you learned in in Washington State. For almost a hundred years, uh, the federal government and the firefighting profession uh, has mismanaged our national uh, our national forest. Uh, they were under the assumption that fire was unnatural, that all fires had to be stopped and put out, and we've done that. And, and fire is a natural part of forest communities. And originally, pre-settlement uh, days, uh, slow-burning fires would move through the forest, uh, burning along the ground, getting rid of uh, uh, duff and pine needle and, and dead trees and little um, um, seedlings that were coming up. But then we stopped that. And so for about 100 years, everything has filled up. The, the forests are just filled with, uh, with flammable material, with, with, with uh, highly flammable fuel. RJ, true or false that they actually, the environmentalist, the same ones that are going to tell me it's my fault because I have an SUV, the same damn environmentalists are the ones that have stopped people in California from clearing brush on their own property. Precisely. For, first, the, the, the feds made things bad with a hundred years of mismanagement, and then starting around 1975, 1980, into there, the Greens made things worse by stopping all management, no management. And they said fire was natural, and it was natural regulation, and let it burn, uh, particularly in the national parks. And you saw what happened in, in Yellowstone, the great experiment. It burned down half the park. That's their big success story. And, and they love that. I mean, their chief biologist out there was chanting, burn, baby, burn, as the fire you know, roared through his uh, study plots. Uh, one of the Audubon Society uh, board members uh, who teaches children for the Audubon Society said the biggest disaster of the Yellowstone fires 
was that they did not destroy the town of West Yellowstone, oh, which is the entrance to the park, because it was all ticky-tacky and neon clutter, and it should have been reduced to ashes. That's the philosophy okay. of the Greens. They Kim. don't like people, and they don't like people out in the woods. Okay, Chris, 65% of all land west of Denver owned by the federal government, true or false, and why should that matter? Uh, true, and it should matter because we face a situation where the worst landlord in the country has the most land. And I've never been to your home, Glenn, but I'm guessing that your men's room is cleaner than the one at Penn Station. That's a microcosm of the tragedy of the commons. I'm assuming things here. Yes, uh, no, it, it is. <laughs> the fact of the matter is that if everybody owns something, nobody has the property to take care of it. And that's what happens here, which is why the fire start on uh, publicly owned lands. They, they start elsewhere. Greece, as you know, had a tragic fire. This year, a government almost fell. It was their Hurricane Katrina. It proved not the incompetence of that government, but the incompetence of government. But again, in Greece, most of the forest land is owned by the state. Okay. That's where these things traditionally start. Okay, thanks, guys. And that's what's happened in our, in our forest here I, in this country. i got to run. Thank you very much. Now, true America.